Has pollen got you sneezing? Wondering where that mysterious afternoon haze is coming from? How do you find out what's in the air you're breathing? For thousands of people each day, the answer's clear, even if the air is not. Just a web click away, it's the Smog Blog. The Smog Blog is a daily diary of pollution in the United States. We have students looking at air pollution across the country from NASA and NOAA assets to tell public forecasters what's going on in the country. And the small blog's not just for weather forecasters. Average Joes with hay fever, asthma, heart problems, and those with just a healthy curiosity about what's in the air. Read the blog to get up-to-date, understandable air quality information. The NASA-funded team, led by physicist Ray Hoff, gathers ground information from their home base at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. First, they get a real-time view of current air quality by using high-tech instruments, like the sun photometer, which measures the thickness of the pollution layer, and a laser shooting instrument called LIDAR. It's similar to radar, but it uses light instead of microwaves. Bouncing a laser beam off of airborne particles to gauge the amount and kinds of pollutants. The human respiratory system is designed so that most of the big particles are all taken out in your nose. They come out in the nasal passages. So particles that are smaller than two and a half microns in size, those particles get deep into the lungs. And so if you have uh, respiratory problems like asthma, or if you have cardiopulmonary problems like uh, you're predisposed to having high blood pressure and you could have a heart attack, those are the particles that we worry the most about. While the ground-based gear gets an accurate picture of what's happening today, it doesn't let the smog bloggers see into the future. For that, they turn to NASA satellites. Global satellite imagery lets the smog bloggers spot incoming particulate matter traveling aloft on air currents, like smoke from forest fires. In the West, because of the predominance of forest fires, West and Canada, You'll see a lot of smoke in the, in the West in, the, in our blog posts and the kind of iconic pictures that came out of the California fires that were shown on CNN over and over again. The public really latches on to the fact that satellites can tell them what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis when they see these large events happening. So far, the smog blogs had over 20 million hits. Followers can watch pollution travel around the world from coal-fired plants, desert sandstorms, even volcanic eruptions. And for the students who blog, more even than a lesson in science, it's a chance to connect directly with the people their research helps most. When you can put together a real world application at the end of it that you know why it's important you're doing this, it's a lot easier for you to go to class and say, okay, I'll put up with having to do those equations because I know why I'm doing it. That's it? All right, that's it. Good job. Awesome, great.